thank you everybody for this wonderful opportunity. I want to also thank the TEDx community. I think the, uh, what we're experiencing today is, is an incredible experiment in human communication, a way to advance ideas that might not get advanced or, or, uh, not, or push on concepts that, that really should be pushed on. Um, certainly, I want to thank the local element of TEDx and, and their uh, support of me in, in uh, this opportunity to present. I also want to uh, express my gratitude to this audience, not just the folks that are here today, but everybody else who watches what we're doing, for being interested in what I'm doing. And when I say I, it really should be I, we, because there's today a network of people that are dedicating their lives to the idea of nature as model, biomimicry. In fact, a gal named Janine Benyus, a Montanan, uh, wrote the book. So Montana is in sort of a leadership role of sorts around this idea of nature as model. Transition water, that name, by the way, borrows from transition communities, communities that are getting ready for the future, the uncertain future. Water has a lot in common with that. And we'll, uh, I'll expand on that here in just a moment. But uh, in fact, let's, let's dive right in. Check out the water clarity there. Check out the fish. For me, that's part of why I live here. I actually did dive, dive into that water. Um, at the time, I was wearing a black wetsuit. And I never saw a fish. I expect they thought I was a big otter. But this is reflective of what we're living in Montana for, isn't it? I'm going to back up just, I want to share something with you. These fish are staging underneath that island. They're protecting themselves from osprey predation. Those are rainbow trout, and they want to spawn. But the ospreys pick them off. So here they're using an island as security cover. And I'm not going to share the spot. <laughs> now we're on the other side of Billings. We're in the, uh, on the edge of the northern Great, Great Plains. And the nutrients that are getting into our water here are responsible for that foam that you're looking at. That's a patch of cyanobacteria. That stuff can be toxic. When you see that in the water, you don't want your pets to drink from the water nearby. You sure don't want your kids to go swimming in that water. A few years back, 50, 60 years ago, uh, fertilizer entered the scene. The concept of nutrient enrichment of water by ag fertilizers is today the most serious problem around water. Ironically, this problem happens most in first world countries. But now that fertilizer is becoming available in second and third world locations, the problem will happen there on a terrific basis. But it's happening here right now. One of the key points that is, was a surprise, a very recent surprise, but the phosphorus that comes into the water in inorganic form actually has a multiplier effect. It's 10 times more impactful than organic bound phosphorus would have been. It skips a trophic level. This is well outside of nature's model. That algae you're looking at, that carpet of algae, was what we started with at Shepherd, at our headquarters on a place called Fish Fry Lake. Montana is in a unique place. We have this layer of shale over the east, underneath the eastern portion of the state, associated with the fact that there used to be an inland sea there. And that shale catches water before it can go proceed down deep into the earth. What that does is it compounds this particular problem. It makes it even worse, combined with the idea that we don't get much rainfall. So we don't flush like many other parts of the country do. For that reason, by the way, this is Fish Fry Lake right now. I'm a little bit out of sequence. But notice what's happened after six years. Before I move on to the next slide, I just want you to understand that those three points are the key to transition water. That's how we get there. But here's what I was thinking of. I wanted to point out right away. The worst water in our country today, relative to phosphorus pollution, which breeds that cyanobacteria and that algae is right here in the Northern Great Plains. This was an eye opener, truly a surprise for me. This comes from EPA, by the way, it's their data. The worst in the water, when you see red like that, you're dealing with water that is actually potentially dangerous to human health, not to mention animals. 
It's not why we live in Montana. The three steps we just looked at, the concept of preventing phosphorus, that's the big one. The next one, resurrecting the food web. The third one, harvesting. All come together in this statement. This is what we're talking about. If we're going to have our water back, this is what we have to do. If you look at those first three lines, they describe what we're getting for this. In other words, we're with, uh, per the green revolution, we're actually getting really inexpensive wheat. Translates into inexpensive meat, bread, inexpensive sugar. And there's a bit of a picture of what goes on. Some of the other things that we get per that condition. Here's a look at blue tongue. Blue tongue is a particularly terrible way for white-tailed deer and antelope, now mule deer, to die. It's coming through Montana. It's actually based on an invasive species of midge called the Culicoides midge. Last uh, two years ago, I guess it was uh, up in the mussel shell. Uh, and uh, last year, uh, up further up on the Milk River. It'll be in Canada soon. But uh, the, the midge is one of the life forms that can make a living in impaired water. Just like the mosquito, the Culex mosquito that spreads West Nile and today kills people in Montana every year. Wyoming too. Those are fathead minnows. They are, they're a native species of minnow and we're experimenting at Shepherd with the idea of growing them from the nutrients that are in the water. In other words, without adding additional nutrients, without adding, the, uh, uh, without adding anything to the water, but instead helping the water to cycle the nutrients out of the water in the form of appropriate biota. Each one of those fathead minnows can, and this is measured data, but uh, we'll consume about an average of 65 mosquito larvae per day. Not only that, they're extremely prolific. A single female fathead minnow will lay eggs every fifth day. 250 to 325 eggs every fifth day when water temps are over 50 degrees. Biological control. The World Health Organization, in their opening statement, their, their model for how they're gonna fix disease problems around the world, says that biological control is the only way it's gonna happen. At a small pond uh, within the, the floating island international headquarters area, by the way, everybody here is invited to come visit. And for the audience that's out there, same thing. If you get to Montana, stop in, check, uh, check us out. We've had folks from 43 different countries come through now because the idea is taking hold. There's international foundations the names of whom you'd recognize, that we're in talks with about this idea. Because in a little 5,000 square foot pond, we engendered 540 pounds of these minnows. That translates to 70,000 or 72, 73,000 of these minnows. And we didn't add food. We didn't add more nutrients to do it. Instead, we resurrected the food web. There's a puddle this summer we stopped at. We noticed it was on the road. Notice the color of the water. Those little black dots are mosquito larvae. This water is impaired. The rest of the food web isn't there. But just 40 yards over, there's another puddle. This one's got small bullfrogs in it. Bullfrogs are an invasive species on the one hand. On the other hand, they eat mosquito larvae. You'll note the color of the water is different. The minerals, the nutrients that were present in puddle number one have become bullfrog. That's how you cycle them out of the water. By the way, those bullfrogs get cycled out of the water too. Between the raccoons, the mink, the blue herons, and the people. We've harvested 570 of them from, one, from Fish Fry Lake last summer. Average nine ounces each. Very tasty. <laughs> this was the third surprise. This is the really big one. This one turns water management on its head. You resurrect the food web by providing the base of the food web with what it needs to make a living. Two big variables, two things that it always needs. The base of the food web, which is biofilm generating bacteria. Microbes and their residue are biofilm. The reason we know about biofilm is because the Center for Biofilm Engineering is located here in Montana, Montana State University. It's an incredible organization in a leadership role relative to this kind of science for the whole planet. NIWA in New Zealand, 
M the, the Center for Biofilm Engineering here in Montana, LSU in Louisiana, they're all keying on this idea of floating treatment wetlands, modular ability to bring the wetland effect back to almost any water so that biofilm generating bacteria can do what they do so well. They're better at uptake of nutrients than any other life form. Surface area in its natural form on the left, another form of surface area man-made on the right. But there are hundreds of other forms too. Cobble, sand, brush. All of that factors into this idea of turning, restoring the food web so that those nutrients can cycle up. But you're not done when that happens. There's got to be a harvest too. It's another element to the whole process. And we're the top of the food chain. So we're involved. Notice the surface area. Notice the minnow fry along the very perimeter. If you're a mosquito or a midge, it's gonna be a very tough place to make a living. You'll want eyes on top of your head. Minnow pond is actually produced 1,100 pounds on a per acre foot of water basis of minnows last year. The, uh, that rate is outrageous. There's no other wild fishery in the state of Montana that comes anywhere near that. Fish Fry Lake is next in line, and it's number two, and both of them are happening right here, half an hour from where we're sitting. Yellow perch that grow to two pounds in five years. And they taste really good. <laughs> you know, we're in an upward spiral. That's the fun part, the energizing part about what we're doing. That's, that's why I'm here. I'm not a public speaker, but I want to share this. This is, this is so wonderful to be around. That's freshwater sponge. We didn't even know that there was such a creature until a visiting biologist pointed it out. And it's happening in Fish Fry Lake now. It's a filter feeder. It's a very basic form of animal life. And it is cleaning up the water. It's helping us. We went from 14 inches of water clarity to as much as 19 feet now. We're coming back. We're in transition. Here's a small predator. <laughs> in just a few short years, he's likely to be an intern within our organization. Big predator. <laughs> the reason I mentioned interns, and I want to close on that note, is just that we've experimented with the process of bringing interns through our uh, program. They spend a season with us. And I've been energized by them. Their, their connection with the environment, their actual frustration, and the energy they're willing to devote to the process is our hope for the future. I am absolutely convinced that things are going to get way better. But I wanted you to know that this was happening right here in your backyard. And, and please, share your energy with us whenever you can. We welcome the opportunity to work with you if that is possible or if nothing else, to at least show you in detail, in person, what goes on at Shepherd. When you do come to Shepherd, I promise I'll let you walk in front of me as we walk around the floating islands. So you'll get a look at the critters happening, instead of me flushing them, because I walk fast. <laughs> Thank you very much.